There. Now I'm live on my ha- side. I don't even have a button yet. Well, you don't need a button. Buttons are overrated. Are this is a special pre-show exclusive for my viewers. While your yeah, viewers we're, are we're waiting for my waiting. button to glow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, son of a... I don't know if this actually worked. I don't know what just happened. I hope I'm live, but it doesn't look like I am. Well, or maybe I... Maybe? In the me- maybe? In, in the meantime... I could say, uh, welcome to Fast yeah. Charging with B&B, the I am live. simulcast podcast of uh, all kinds of electric and renewable and exciting, and who knows, we might just talk about how much a dealership suck. <laughs> I don't know if we've ever gotten to that. By the way, I'm B, I'm Brian. And I'm B the bear. Yeah, he's a real B. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant something much worse. Oh. How is everybody? Let us know. Uh, I melt. Uh, I melt. YouTube uh, says sounds good, so that's good. Uh, new camera, <laughs> looking crisper than usual. Nah, I just monkey with the settings sometimes. So that's you know. filter on. Just put the one with the funny <laughs> ears on. Mm-hmm. 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 <sighs> uh, JJ's already trying to like do breaking news with Nicola. In LAX, but we'll save that for later because we got a lot more to do. Huh? Yeah. Mark wants to know why doesn't my link show up? I don't know. It, it's I'm I'm live. I've got people in my chat, so I don't know. It's because YouTube is kind of the devil. <laughs> yeah, well, Mark, you need to be here anyway. Yeah. Uh, every week, uh, Brian and I have a competition at the end of the uh, show. Going, how many did you have? What was your top amount? And he always beats me by two. So if he has one less over there and one more over here, hey, I get another vote. So thank you, Mark, for being here and not there. Ugh. Hey, uh, you ever heard of the McMurtry Spearling? Try and say that again. <laughs> McMurtry Spearling. I don't McMurtry. know. McMurtry. Or is it McMurtry? Oh, it's uh, I call it a Batmobile. Isn't it adorable? It is. It is cute. It kind of looks small. Yeah, like, it definitely like looks maybe, small. Like maybe he, this guy in it is maybe four foot nine, but uh, he's a looks, jockey. He, he <laughs> does look like a jockey. He I does. don't mean that in a bad way, no. but that it it looks like it's uh, pretty fun. And I don't know if you, I'm running his zero to sixty on his first lap, and he looks like he's just letting go of every orifice of liquids that he possibly could because he was so scared yeah you, so why don't you explain the car because i can't well so uh, you've got the usual things you've got the weight savings it's mostly carbon fiber it only seats one it's they've done all the things but then they've also added fans that blow air up and out which has the effect of sucking the car to the ground to improve uh, traction and also um just extra downforce, which allows you more traction than you would otherwise get, allowing your zero to 60 to drop into the low ones. The low ones, huh? Yeah. That is, um, that's pretty cool. Uh, how much does this thing cost? Cost? Who said it's <laughs> for sale? Well, all right. Is, is, is it available for sale? Sure. Got 1.2 million smackaroo bobs. Oh. All and, right. Uh, how, yeah. When can I and get I it? And I don't. I don't think it's road legal. It would just be a track car at that price. Yeah. And because it's such limited edition, you know that there's no warranty, or effectively no warranty. But if you're paying 1.2 million for a car, I don't know, man. I don't think they plan on selling. Do you? Does it have AC? That's all mm-hmm. I care about. I don't believe it does. I'd be very surprised if it does. Sirius XM? <laughs> yes, but it's aftermarket. The oh. dealership will add it for you for just $500. Oh, you can, and the window tint and the door edge guards, right? Well, Digital Blade just said, Turo it out, bear. <laughs> yeah, totally would work. I uh, could see it. It's cool, but, you know. Mar- that, Mark says okay. if you have to ask, you can't afford it. No, I need to know how much to write the check for. Right. So, the rubber check. <laughs> no, no, Bear. If you have to ask, you can't write a check. 
Oh, that's, yeah, that's true. Who uses checks anymore, anyway? Oh, you'll love this. Speaking of if you can't afford it, we uh, it's time to get Big Dog Spade. And so we uh, went ahead and called our usual vet. Which, uh-huh. isn't, which isn't our favorite vet, but it was the only one that had availability during lockdown. And they were real squirrely about it and didn't want to tell us the price. So we're like, you got, you have, they said, well, you have to do a well dog checkup first, which is $80. And then because she's over 50 pounds, it's going to be 715. Oh, and, I, and I go, I go, I go, first of all, she's well, she don't need a check. No, no. Every dog needs a checkup. Every, I go. This isn't my first dog, man. You think, okay? And I go, but seven fifteen. Are you out, yo? Are you standing beside your mind? <laughs> wow. And so we called everyone. We called Tina. Called like fifteen places, and literally nobody is charging seven fifteen. Literally nobody. The highest other price we found was like six. And the place we're going is like 400 and an hour closer to our house. So it's like 715 plus an 80, 800. Oh, you guys are shameless. You weren't going to say shameless. You, you no, were... I, was, yeah. I was debating whether or not I should point out whether I should name <laughs> them. Because, they're, because it's funny. It's St. Francis Animal Hospital. You know. A Catholic vet. <sighs> Irony. Irony. Okay. I don't know what it is. Hey, do you know that uh, Aptera has shared their design? It says it's still on track to start production. Uh, um, But they still need more money, don't they? Well, <laughs> yes. Yes, they need more money. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I look at Aptera and I kind of... I see them on the same track. I was like solo, electromechanica solo, mm-hmm. and we had a couple of screenshots that um, I snuck into the factory kind of the other night. They have windows in their factory, okay, from floor to ceiling. All right. Okay. So the other night I was driving past there, and they they don't leave all the lights on, but they leave enough lights on. I was able to walk up to these glass door, these glass windows. And take my phone out and take a bunch of pictures. And uh, I plugged it in the last uh, Lucid live stream video. But they probably had about 100 solos sitting in there. And they didn't really have a production line. It looks like they're hand assembling each one like at a station. Uh, but you could see them. They're off to the distance. I really would need a good zoom. But Electromechanica is starting to put out their little solo things. I'd really like to see Aptera uh, get somewhere. I like the idea. It's t- it's a two seater, right? Yes, two seat side by side. And I'll tell mm. you, my my concern with uh, Aptera is uh, with uh, with the Solo is I've never seen one in a customer's hands. I've seen tons of them available for test drives and for demos and at I have. all the different shows. Oh, yeah, that's I have. right. You've seen one. Yeah, I have seen one. Besides the one that I drove. I did see one, and it was definitely not on a test drive because it was about 60 miles from where they do the test drives, and it was out on a freeway on an Indian reservation. So it wasn't close to anything. But he was he was moving down the freeway at yeah. no more than 65 miles per hour. But I'm sure it could go faster than that, though. I, did, I went faster than that in that, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh... But there's exciting news in terms of new new EVs being released and uh, shown. Yeah, Toyota. Toyota. Toyota's got a pickup, baby. Now that is not the... quite what you'd expect. <laughs> it's, well, it's a I, well it, I expect it to not look like a butt. Uh, did it meet butt. my expectations? A butt? It looks like ass. This is just not <laughs> a good design. So, well, right, but this is a work truck for... Smaller markets, okay. I guess. I mean, it's fine. It's it, fine. it is a it is a pure work truck. Um, I don't know if they had to introduce it with uh, the back window guard, and I don't particularly care for the hooks, the built-in hooks on the bed. Uh, we don't do that anymore in the United States. But if it's a work truck, uh, those things are actually probably come in handy. Um, yeah. 
But honestly, if it's a full work truck, you know, you got to downgrade those wheels also because you, you just get like those regular cheap steel wheels. You don't get anything fancy like that. Yeah. So I don't even think it's going to be that good. No. No. But at least Toyota is getting serious about EVs. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know if that was a segue to the next one. It wasn't. But it wasn't. It, I, I screwed just, that up. Yeah. Just on the on the last note of that, uh, of this thing before we move on while swallowing our vomit, uh, there's no stats on this. No range. Yeah. No cost. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. There, there's nothing. So we'll go to something that actually uh, probably has more specs to it, like the Hyundai Kona. Yeah. Right, Hyundai's is... crushing it. Yeah, they've redesigned their Kona with several different uh, variants. They've got an EV, which we know stands for electric vehicle. They've got an HEV. I assume that's hybrid electric vehicle. Maybe? I would assume so. I would Ice. Assume so which I would assume would be internal combustion engine, and N, which is nuclear. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds right. It sounds right to me, because I really don't know what the N stands for. Uh, well, uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not in the mood to make a joke like that today, but uh, I would say that uh, I'm not surprised. I'm disappointed, but I'm not surprised. The fact that you've seen how there's no frunk, there's no room for a frunk, that means this was never meant to be a pure electric uh, platform. It, and it's disappointing. It is true. It is true. But uh, the range on this is going to be around 250. Uh, the style is going to be better. Um, you can see the picture I'm putting up is of the interior. Uh, it, it does look a little bit more fancy uh, than probably the previous model, which I don't know what it looks like. But this is more in line with the, like the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Not exactly like it. it. It it does have its differences. I think it's a it's a decent refresh on the outside, from what I can see. But you know, they're all renders. I yeah, I didn't mind the old one. I don't mind the new one. It's fine. Oh, the the old one is kind of just like eh. I I couldn't even tell one. It's just very blase. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. all good news for Kia. No bad yeah, news. Oh, absolutely, unless you uh, consider child labor a problem kids don't have you enough get... jobs bear they need jobs what are y'all sleeping all for you but you ought to get to work that's what they well, say down in alabama to their 12 year old the uh child unemployment rate is very high kia's making great strides to correct that <clears throat> and that is a good thing that they, they are there for those kids that just you know don't want to complete the seventh grade and really want to get to work so, <sighs> new, and to be honest, Honda and Kia are not directly hiring 12-year-olds. No. They are indirectly hiring. No, no, of course hiring. not. Indirectly, yes. Indirectly. They're, they're hiring suppliers who are cutting corners, as suppliers do. Uh, if this was happening in Korea, it would be huge news. If it was happening to Tesla or, or any of the startups, it'd be earth-shattering news. But somehow... This just people just don't seem to care, and I don't understand why. But uh, hey, man, well uh, they're facing they're facing steep fines. Bear, did you see how much they are? It's in the last paragraph. In the last paragraph, yeah, it's got, it's got to be like tens of dollars, thirty six thousand oh, dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's like two thousand dollars per miner. That's that's actually not bad because they were probably paying oh, them less. They, so, they probably yeah, weren't paying them like the proper wage either, so they they probably still made out. It's more like five thousand dollars each. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's absolute. Oh, such a bargain. Ah, such a bargain. Uh, can you I noticed... can you imagine a thirteen year old kid in like a, their performance review? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep, I can. You were car you were caught watching cartoons, and, and you had an accident. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I'm 13. <laughs> hey, when I was 13, that wasn't a defense that came to mind. <laughs> but ah, oh, good times. Yeah, well, it, it could be worse. How? Well, you you could have to tell your uh, 
your customers don't park your car in the garage because our 12 year olds put together the, the car incorrectly and it could catch on fire and burn your whole house down with your family inside. You know, it's crazy. Subaru has, has got this big warning out that affects an awful, awful lot of cars, hundreds of thousands of them. And that's just the problem with electric cars, Bear, is they burn. Yeah, that, yeah they, they burn, but not as well as these ice cars. These are all Wait, ice this cars. isn't electric? No, it's not. Is that why I had to dig and dig to find this story? Because you'd think... With all the fuss, oh, I see it. I see it on social media every day. Oh, Teslas are great. If you want to burn your house down, um, so EVs, even the Bolt, which is famously a Fuego machine, is way is like ten times less likely to combust than a uh, than a gasoline car. And, and I actually had a, it's a hundred times a, less if it's a, not if it's a Subaru. Yeah. I actually had a guy say, nope, here's, I, I, I can prove to you that Teslas are fire machines. Here, look at this literal PDF from the National Highway Traffic Safety Institute. It says Teslas are 10, you know, 70% more likely to be involved in a non-crash fire. And I'm like, you mean parked? So they're slightly more likely to, I go, okay. Back up and look at the total figures. It's 20 times more likely for, for internal combustion on account of the splody juice. <laughs> splody juice? That's what they uh, power them with. I don't know if you've uh, filled up recently, but that's what they use. Yeah, well, I have, but I, I, I saw gasoline and not splody juice, but hey. Oh, well, if you want to use the scientific term. Yeah, so... You, um, because of all these fires with EVs, these tens and tens of them that happen all the time, uh, do you think like maybe the auto auto executives are just uh, afraid of all the fires, or and they don't seem to understand? No, like, I think they're all in on EVs, all in, except for all of them that aren't. Oh, oh yeah. Well, don't worry. I'm sure. So apparently auto executives are having a little bit of hesitation about the transition to EVs, but don't worry. I'm sure they surveyed them and found out who the actual market leaders are. Cause I know, I mean, you and I know who the market leader is. Well, we both do. Thank you, Mary, for leading us to this point. But Mary, I got some you done did it. I, yeah, I got some bad news for you, Mary. Apparently all the executives that were polled were asked <clears throat> who, who could possibly be in the lead in the year 2030? Mm -hmm. And I think... She came in first or second? Uh, well, let's be fair, and, and I'll let you know that there was... It was, I think, the top 10, 12, uh -huh. and uh, she's not to be seen. So Nowhere the top, on the list. So Tesla's still at the top, though, not dominating like it was a year ago. Audi, somehow is in second place among... Now, this is a survey of 180 auto executives. Yeah, you know, Audi wasn't even on the list last year. Yeah. <laughs> so that means next year GM will be number two. Uh, <laughs> BMW, Apple. Apple is at number four. Which, Apple, which, are, which one of their cars do you like the best? I've got to say the... <clears throat> the... Uh, yeah, the Pogo stick. The Apple car? my favorite. <laughs> yeah. call it the apple cart yeah they put that one first uh cart with a c-a-r-t in case you didn't hear the t oh i know i did i did yeah cart like uh, yeah yeah Out. yeah yeah okay and, and and they put that before the apple cart uh right. let's see the so, so <laughs> they'll just call it the horse yeah um so I, I, my eyes aren't that good i i don't see gm on this list I don't either, and that's, and that's, just to be clear, these auto, these hundred and eighty auto executives are telling me with a straight face that Fisker is on the list and GM is not, and, and so is a company that they made up, B A I D O, <laughs> right? Which which is not a real company. No. What, what, by, what's the correct spelling on that? By do with a U at the end is the one I assume they mean. Yeah, they uh, in their little survey. 
And I'm assuming these survey results are straight from KPMG or wh whoever did this, uh, WKRP. Uh, <laughs> Les Nessman is a uh, yeah. Wrote this Les Nessman put this together, <laughs> uh -huh. and they couldn't even get the name of one of the car companies right. Unless we're wrong, but I googled B A I D O because I was like, "What is that?" And nothing at all came up. So, unless I'm not like searching Google China, which is possible. Uh, then they just got this totally wrong. Somebody did, either the, the the radio people or the CNBC who regurgitated this horrible information. So this is our, our FUD News Award winner of the day, I think. Yeah. This is nonsense. You remember when uh, WKRP gave out turkeys for Thanksgiving? No, I don't. Oh, yeah, they were uh, dropping them live from the traffic copter. <laughs> oh, my God, I think that with, sounds familiar. Yeah, With Les Nessman on the street, <laughs> yeah. covering it live. Um, it's and, great. And, and, uh, on a final note on this, um, I do believe GM <laughs> will be on this list. Yeah. And, and towards the top. And I'm uh, not convinced Apple will be. I'm not it's convinced been, Apple it's will have been a car. Ten, yeah, it's been 10 years already. <clears throat> and they just keep pushing it out. And one of those companies, Toyota, this is a good segue right here. <laughs> they don't even want to make the cars. Is that because Toyota's president says there's a <clears throat> silent majority questioning electric vehicle only push? We shouldn't limit ourselves. <laughs> I, I almost. If they're did the, silent, I, how does he I, know? I, I, I almost did the accent. <laughs> <laughs> No, do it. Do it. No. Nah. Nah. I lost enough subscribers over the last two weeks. Toyota's president's questioning whether the push for uh, the phase-out of gas-powered vehicles is the right decision. Well, he's worried about the infrastructure not being ready, but the infrastructure not being ready is on the countries, the cities, the municipalities that uh, people are in. And... I just, I don't know what his problem is with this and if he really believes this or if uh, uh, maybe OPEC is like feeding him tens and tens of millions of dollars to say this. I'm not calling him corrupt, but you know what? You're not going to progress this by being negative. This certainly doesn't help putting out their FUD. So there is a uh, city in Australia or it's all roll out 30,000 EV chargers. And how are they going to do it, Brian? Uh, I assume by magic, by magic, by magic. So they're doing a, a, a magical thing where they're tying into the light poles that are all over the place and already there, already there. And uh, apparently they must have the right gauge wiring because they think they can do this. Otherwise it would not be so easy. So they're just going to start plugging them into, uh, these light poles. And from there. Uh, people can charge their cars, uh, looking at 50 cents a kilowatt hour. Not sure the charging speed. I didn't see anything on that. So here's my assumption is that it's a nice, chill level two. Now, do you remember the wattage of these public city light bulbs, what they were 10 years ago? They were probably in the hundreds. Well into the hundreds. They've, I'm sure, been replaced with LEDs that are in the dozens. Dozens, so, and now they have extra electricity. Yeah, they've got surplus capacity uh, that can be better used. So that's, I think, how that works. And by the way, uh, Toyota saying that the infrastructure isn't ready. In Japan, that may be true. Japan struggles with a lack of natural resources. That's kind of a you problem, not a, not a global problem, man. Yeah, I heard they lost one of their nuclear reactors recently. <laughs> I didn't hear about that. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Hey, here's some uh, tips that any 10-year-old uh, could have figured out. Don't build a nuclear power station on the shore. Uh, it doesn't need beachfront property. <clears throat> See, it I, does for cooling, but there there are no, ways to... Doesn't no, it? You, they don't use seawater to cool. You can't use seawater. No, but you can use the... But you can put heat exchangers under the water, which is... Like the like oh, the uh, oh, here's skyscrapers will pipe, frequently do that. Pipe, yeah, pipe the it. water in. Yeah, uh, don't don't build it uh, within ten feet of sea level. How about that? 
yeah uh, i mean i feel bad for all the people that lost their lives and all the homes that were lost but you know you're in, you're in an earthquake country uh, or area you're on the ring of fire and to put something like that right on the shore when you know there's a decent possibility of a wave going over that and destroying that plant i don't understand the logic behind that and i look at the japanese people as very smart people i really do yeah but the guy who said hey this looks like a good place and no i wasn't going to do the accent well what um, happened part of what happened was the the seawalls were built to reasonable heights and they would have been adequate if the tsunami had happened at low tide it happened at high tide and that allowed it to overtop in just just everywhere anyway but uh, yeah, well, you don't plan for the, you plan for the worst case scenario, not like oh, I, well, maybe maybe we'll get lucky. It's fifty. I would 50. think so. I would think so. But you know, so planning is something that you have to have, especially when you're going on road trips in EVs, hmm. and especially in the winter time, hmm. because you're going to have different types of range in your EVs. Mm-hmm. And how did all the cars do? When uh, facing sub-zero or freezing temperatures. It depends on the car. Some did better than others. Uh, Would you believe, to my surprise, the ID4 did really bad. Yes. Why why, why is that a surprise to you? Um, Because German engineering is generally quite good, and they are built to be used in a country that gets snow. In a continent that gets snow. <laughs> so I expected them to do to do better. And yeah, the Mach-E did quite bad. The Bolt did quite bad. The Audi did reasonable. Uh, yeah, the Jaguar I-Pace did reasonable. Uh, I think the I-Pace did really well. Really so the, well. So the, that is estimated. That was, was not <clears throat> verified That's with actual true. test numbers. That's true. But yeah, some of these did quite well in the snow, and some did real bad. Well, it's not necessarily snow. It is cold. Just the temperature. Yeah. Yeah. I I wouldn't take my Chevy Bolt into the snow. (laughs) Ever. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, all right. So when you are running out of juice a little sooner than you would think... Porsche has a, has got a solution to charge quicker. They have uh, they put a, they've made available a new onboard charger. You can actually upgrade your Taycans for like fifteen hundred dollars, and it will reduce your charging times by half. Is this photoshopped? Because that doesn't look real. The charging station. Yeah, that looks, that looks... awesome. Because you could wrap your whole quarter around that. And it looks really cool. I like that. It's yeah. probably not real, though. It's, it's maybe it's not, a speaker. But... Maybe it's playing <laughs> playing Romstein in the back or something. That's probably it. Uh-huh. Like... It's probably playing Nina. <laughs> so the uh... so how does this work? Oh, beats the hell out of me. But it's yeah. a it, you can change out uh, the charging module, I believe, on the car to a 19.2 kilowatt onboard charging module. Yeah. Uh, takes uh takes about a full day or two to get the Porsche people to do it for you. Yeah, uh, I don't know if the fifteen hundred dollars includes the labor for it. I would seems kind of cheap if it does because that's twelve hours worth of work at Porsche. Yeah, and above at the top of that paragraph it says it's eighteen fifty, so maybe it's eighteen fifty plus fifteen hundred, but I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Well, yeah. the module's eighteen fifty, but you so I. Yeah, beats the hell out of yeah, me. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Know. Jeff says yeah. just needs you just need an eighty amp service for it in your house. Oh, you probably need a hundred. <laughs> you 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 really probably need a hundred. Yeah, just for this. Yeah. Yeah. And. <laughs> oh no! It is a hundred. It says it on the bottom. A hundred amps. Yeah, but. Good lord! A <laughs> hundred amp circuit. I've owned houses that had 100 amp circuits that were 100 amp service. Yeah. My my shop that I sit in, uh-huh. that you've been in, 
Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's runs on a hundred amps. That's a lot, dude. Yeah. That's well, a lot. I also have tied into that same circuit, uh, my chargers. Oh yeah. The, yeah. Uh, my two level two chargers. I also have, uh, I have one item in this shop that runs off of two forty, and that requires I think forty amps, and that's uh with the car lift. So, yeah, I just wanted to be able to expand. So, by the way, there are some comments on your side about turning light poles into charging points. Not sure I'm buying that, and maybe that's BS. Uh, they already do this in Europe, so it's not far-fetched. Uh, not at it, all. Not at all. No, it's it, you just can't get, you know, level three charging. Uh, but for trickle charging, especially if it's somewhere you're going to park, uh, it's, it's quite reasonable. <laughs> Yeah, I mentioned to there was a guy said, "Well, you know, uh, we can't we can't switch to EVs because those of us who don't live in houses or don't have garages, where are we supposed to park? Where are we supposed to charge?" I said, "You know, in Europe, there's a lot of street parking where you just plug into the poles." He said, "Well, where I live, there's no lights. <laughs> there's no lights. No, no. Where do you Australia? I'm like, well, you know, I've never been there. Maybe, maybe the street you live on is so crowded." That there's limited street parking and no street lights, but well, uh, well I, I'll tell you, I, I, I lived in New York, and in the apartment areas where there's a lot of these apartment buildings that are 15, 20 stories tall, uh, there is always a parking issue trying to find uh, parking spots, and the light posts are going to be ten cars apart. Yeah, uh, yeah. So there is a limit to how many. Uh, yeah, for sure, those- for sure. But he also said that there's no street lights, and maybe that's true. But it just, eh, yeah. <laughs> there are there are solutions. They will take a while. Uh, not everything is is going yeah. to be an overnight fix. And it doesn't need to be. Can we just can we be positive for one minute? No, Toyota says it's going to fail. <laughs> well, if. If the grandson of a guy who made a company that makes pretty good cars says so, who am I uh, to disagree? He must know. He was born into. He was born in a Toyota. Right. He's he he. As we yeah, all know, won. automotive uh, expertise is uh, genetically transmitted. Yeah, especially. So his mom's last name was probably Toyota, right? So he was born out of a Toyota. Literally. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's got to be in his genes. Mm-hmm. Just just makes sense to me. That's why my original name was Brian uh, Dumpster Behind a Wendy's. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so, so I was worried that my batteries were going to die, and they are... I didn't... Uh, couldn't find my charger. Apologies, everybody. I guess I'll just take this one out. Uh, All right. I, I, I knew that was going to happen. Can you hear me now? Can you hear I me? I can still hear you. Unfortunately. Well, let's move on to something cool. Yeah. The FUDless. The, last week we showed a factory uh, tour of, of the F-150 and how it was getting made. Mm-hmm. And so th- this week we have a new video. Yeah, i got to turn off the sound. Um, we have a new video where uh, they're building Rivians down in Normal, Illinois. Is that where it's at? Yes. Okay. Yes. I told so, you how the- I like to joke with my kids where I'll... Where I'll say something that's ridiculous and can't possibly be true, but is. And this week's installment was, they build them in normal. And they're like, that's not, that's not a place. Yeah, it is. It is. You it's know, there's a, there's a place in uh, Arizona called Y. W-H-Y. Nice. So, nice. Just head so down, this is, down the road to Y. This, um... The footage of the Rivian factory is very encouraging to me. I'm still concerned about them getting their their uh, cost down per unit, but the assembly line is real and it's running, and it's got to help. It's got to. Yes, there there's income coming in, and they're getting more deliveries out than some other manufacturers. Yeah, Not and many names. Yeah, and they're. It's a real factory for crying out loud. By the way, William had a great idea. We should call our podcast Barry White. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I 
liked it. I liked it. We, we could get a lot of clicks on that. Mm-hmm. But, the Barry but that, White podcast. But that would also mean I'm your wife. How? That's because I'm taking your no, last name. Slash. It's, there's a slash in between. And but it's plus. It, Barry plus White is what William said. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. The R1S. Um, I've the only thing I've bad I've heard about it is that the third row is super super tight, like like prohibitively tight. Most um, third rows are prohibitively tight. Most third rows are. Uh, you know, yeah. but who who even knows how many how many buyers spend any time past the second row, even in the second row. Yeah, they don't care. It's their kids that get shoved back there. Yeah, or the in-laws. Actually, I think the only third rows that I've seen or been in that are at least decent enough for a, 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 an adult-sized person is probably minivans. And, yeah. Uh, but all of these just SUVs uh, with the third row? No. I'd say That's, Suburbans as well. I don't know. Um, I've been in the back of a... What's the Cadillac version es- of this? Escalade. Suburban? The Escalade. It yeah, I've been in the back of that, and I did not. It was. Didn't well, we are different it? size. Yeah, we are different size people. Oh, that's people. true. That's true. Have you tried being we? <laughs> like a uh, wee bit smaller. Yeah. See. See. Mucho we. So. Uh, yeah. Rivian. Nothing but good news, right? Uh. Yeah. William said sweet music. I hope there's not music playing. I'm not playing any music, I think. Um, just, uh, I got a copyright strike the other day for music. And what, what music? I, I don't know, but we were we were doing a, one of our episodes, video that has made a whole dollar forty three in six months. So, hey man, take it. So, such a broken, stupid system. Do you know that in Florida, a homeowners association has decided to go to war with an owner of a Rivian over his right to park on his own driveway? This is insanity. This yeah, is insanity. You know, yeah. HO, HO, this is HO, HOA rules from the 80s because they didn't want, uh, what, what was their verbiage? They didn't want to pick up our commercial, commercial trucks, tra- trucks. Yeah. trailers, and other things. Because it didn't look good. Back in the 80s, it didn't look good. But you'd think something like this in your driveway would look pretty good now, wouldn't you? They're they're sharp-looking rigs, man. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you know and, the and you could argue this? that you don't personally care for the style, but you can't argue that they are without style. Right. Uh, and this, what I think what I read is that this is actually a photo from his driveway. Is that right? The yellow mustard one? Is it? Uh, uh, no, some are taking pictures of it. They say, beautiful vehicle, can I see it? So no, that's not, but uh, super, you know, the. I was telling Bear before we, we went on that the plural of Karen is HOA. It's an HOA of Karens. Uh, so and I looked it up and fact check true. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't bring fake news here. Yeah. Jeff says, why would a wussy little sport truck bug them? It's not about the truck, Jeff. It's about it's about control. sending a message. <laughs> it's about control Yeah, it's about power. power. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. Do you, do you think a Honda Ridgeline they would object to also? Or yeah. if they put a camper shell on this R1T and made it look like an R1S, is it still okay? Or is an R1S not good? Well... Uh, for that matter, what about a uh, just a Lariat? What about a what about any other pretty truck? Apparently not. I think this is a pretty truck. It's so pretty. Right. I but... mean, as far as trucks go, it is well above average in terms of looks. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Bunch of jerks. Yeah. So if you want to just get like a normal looking truck, but for a whole lot of money, this is a Lightning. Their their work truck price has gone up, so that means they've all gone up, right right across the board, right? All models six to eight thousand dollars. Oh, that was yeah. in August, and then again, it's gone up. 
another seven thousand dollar ish. So yeah. we're looking at fifty five thousand dollars for a work truck, which you cannot yeah. park in Florida's HOAs. Yeah. In a- yeah, that thirty nine thousand dollar truck no longer exists. And really it never did. They probably sold a hundred, maybe maybe a couple hundred at that price. And uh yeah. It was never going to last at that price. It, you cannot sell it. The sheer number of atoms alone makes thirty-nine grand for that truck impossible. Uh, and now we're see. I think fifty-six thousand is a lot more sustainable, and especially since they were not, the dealers were not letting them out the door at thirty-nine grand. Nope. Why let the dealers take the markup when you could just yeah take it yourself. Yeah, the Platinum, 96874. Have it all. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but start your bill to add more options. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that. Oh, it's gonna oh yeah, there's that. definitely more options after that. Oh, yeah, it's nothing but options. It's nothing yeah. but options. Ford is very heavy on adding options onto yeah. their vehicles. Yeah, yeah, and Charlie and Jeff are both pointing out that the thirty nine thousand was a loss leader, and yeah, of course. Do you know where the you know where a lot of those trucks went? They went to demo models where they were parked at the dealerships for people to drive around. Mm-hmm. But they were they didn't sell them until they got to a until they had them a certain amount of time or a certain amount of miles mm-hmm. before they could before they could sell them. It was a certain amount of time because they needed to have them there to show people. That's smart, but. Uh, but I think 56000 is more sustainable. I still think they might be losing money at that price because the Mach-E is around that price, and we know they're losing money on that, and this is a lot bigger with a lot more battery, but it's closer. It's closer. It definitely makes the other companies who are selling uh, selling EVs look less insane. How about that? <laughs> yeah, that's true. But... Um... Well, since we're talking about insanity, uh, let's talk about uh, the Treasury EV tax credit rule has been delayed. Yeah. Uh, and why probably, is that? Probably because they don't know how to do this. That's I mean, my let's, take. Let, let's be honest. They have to figure out what the... And the, I, I think it will get delayed again. They have to figure out where these minerals came for to apply the tax credit. And so they have to somehow go to a manufacturer and say... Where are you getting your cobalt from? Where are you getting your nickel from? Where are you getting your lithium from? Where are you getting all your materials? Which uh, which plant? And then it's not even that. It's like, okay, well, maybe the materials came out of the ground in the Congo and got shipped to Mexico and got refined there. How does that count? They don't know. Is it I don't 50%? Know. It says 50% of battery components. Do we mean 50% by volume, by weight, or by value? <laughs> that's even more ways to look at it yeah, yeah. it's it's definitely the problem is definitely an abundance of confusion there is no clarif- clarity on any of this uh, yeah. and it's a problem so they're, they're going to let it ride and just uh, let Tesla and GM benefit from this for a while uh, without hitting them for not having the minerals in the right places because they're the they're one of the few manufacturers that actually uh, qualify for this. Ford does too, um, but Ford was already, uh, they still had eligible uh, EVs to sell the two out of the 200,000. So they're going to continue on as they were, but Tesla and GM are, are back into the party and being able to get the tax credits. And I think they'll get the full tax credits until they figure this out. And I think uh, we might see uh, an amendment to this bill that maybe clarifies this and simplifies it because I knew when I saw this that it's like, how in the world are you going to figure this out? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And uh, that will be good news for Tesla in Q1 uh, as, as definitely January and probably February, probably resolved by March. It'll allow them to really move on. You you don't think so? No. It'll no. allow them to, uh, but it'll allow them to move big units as fast as they can early on, which is great. And it will not help GM. G- well, they're G- yeah, they're already they're not, not making any cars. 
Yeah, they're not making any so anything that they are going to sell, they would have sold regardless. So it's not going to help them. But yeah. this this will help Tesla. Yeah. But uh, it's time to move on. To what? I think well, we're done, aren't we? Yeah, There's we could be. Else to cover. Well, we can cover the story that LAX takes delivery of its first heavy-duty electric truck, which is the Nikola Trey. What? And that that has joined the fleet over there. What? What? That's an airport. Airports use the Sky Bear. Well, this one actually has a jet turbine, which runs on electric power and can fly. <laughs> fly me to the moon. All right. So they're using this to just haul. Uh, they're hauling stuff around the airport. It's somewhere in this article, uh, but they have they're changing a lot of their vehicles over uh, to alternative energies, uh, trying to get to zero emissions. But this electric truck, and it doesn't say whether or not they're going to be ordering any more, um, but it is their first Class 8 tractor in the city of Los Angeles municipal fleet. So it's the city of Los Angeles that actually owns this, but it's going to be working at the LAX. Did you see how much their EV rebate is on it? Well, what's funny is it's... The government owns it, and they're going to get the rebate from the government. Yeah, but uh, the Port of Los Angeles is a separate entity with separate funds than the state This of. This isn't the Port of Los Angeles. Oh, it isn't? It's LAX. It's the airport. Well, well a lot of airports are run by the Port Authorities. In Seattle, I know it is. It's run true, by the Port Authority. True, true. Um, but I don't think it's run by... Anyway, yeah, it's... Yes, but they are getting a um, $120,000 rebate for the uh, California Hybrid and Zero Emission Truck and Bus Voucher Incentive Program Project, which was uh, announced earlier this year. And I heard from behind the scenes that uh, Nikola got over 100 orders that were related to this. Hmm. I heard that back in April-ish. Oh, that was that never announced. announced. Okay, well, you are... Now on uh, speakers, my headphones are dead, so hopefully the echo isn't too bad. Let's try it out. Echo! I turned you down too much. Keep going. What? Echo! There you go. So the yeah. uh, so what you should do is name your source. Let's get them in trouble. You want to know my source? No. No. Uh, if you want to tell me your source, you do that off air. Uh, don't, be a, it, don't be a fool, Bear. Don't do it. It was JJ. It's JJ. It's JJ. Yeah. He's, as we know, he, he lives in Casa Grande. Yeah. Casa Grande. Uh, my, my source was Peter Rawlinson. Let's get him in trouble. Oh, that'd be beautiful. How would Peter know? Uh, uh, we, we, had, we had drinks in the, uh, what the hell's the name of that place? Ah, there, there's a dive bar down in uh, Coolidge. I forget the name. But, yeah. We Any other there. Nicola news? Yes. I'm trying to get a drink here, dude. Slow down. <laughs> the but, U.S. Uh, fuel cell specialist Plug Power announces that it will buy 75 units of the Nikola Trey FCEV 2 truck within three years and supply customers in North America with green hydrogen using these hydrogen trucks. First vehicles could be handed over as early as 2023. <clears throat> As they plan on uh, starting production of the Nikola Trey FCEVs next year, we could uh, see actual production trucks. They are, they've got their betas out, and uh, those trucks are looking pretty good. I don't know what more they have to do. Echo. I I'm not getting any complaints on Echo. I've got you turned down so far. And uh, yeah, they don't even want to hear me. Yeah. We'll put up the subtitles. Mm-hmm. I actually had a complaint in the comments a while back saying, <laughs> you need to turn on subtitles to allow YouTube to generate subtitles. It's like, you think I tur you think I disable the ability for YouTube to put captions? My gosh, you people. But, you know, some people, some people are just, boy, they just really love to complain. 
I was telling Bayer before we went on that I got so much grief months ago when I said that Tesla stock <coughs> could continue to fall, and here are some reasons why. I lost subscribers over it. And it turns out I was actually correct, so I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, you know, the bearer of bad news sometimes. Yeah. Do what you do, man. Gotta do it. So this will be interesting to see how this works out. Hopefully they're able to get something going in a reasonable time frame. I, I just really think if you've looked at what Nikola is doing with their BEVs, I do not see how their hydrogen trucks are going to surpass their EVs. Oh, easily. Ah, no. Oh, so, so nah. easily. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nah. yeah. You're no, not no, it's okay. It right. It's nah. No, you're wrong. <laughs> no, I checked. I checked. I fact checked it, and the answer's nah. Okay, so the fuel cells are are going to uh, trucks are good, going to end up costing them less because they go from <clears throat> nine batteries to two. Uh huh. Okay, big savings right there. Uh huh. You've you've also got a weight savings because the fuel cell doesn't weigh as much as the seven batteries. So now okay. your your weight's gone down, so your payload capacity goes up. All right. Mm. And the more hydrogen you can store, the more range you can have. Mm. So if you can put on a third tank, you can go even further. Right. So that's you're, all you're doing is uh, taking this hydrogen, converting it into electricity to charge the batteries to run the motors. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know that's simplifying it, but it is simplified in a right. sense. Well, get it, get it out of beta and let's see what it weighs and all that. We, we don't know what the actual stats are, but it's okay. I actually checked and the answer is nah. 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 Yeah. Nah, it's fine. Uh, hydrogen's super cool. But Nikola is so good at making battery electric vehicles that their customers will quickly realize that nah, hydrogen nah. is. Did you look that up on Google or on Lugal? Uh, I looked. No, I looked it up. I asked Jeeves. Is he still around? No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't I know. Jeeves, but uh, I, I could bring it and find away. out if Jeeves is still askable. <laughs> No, I, I would have more faith in Lugal. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know who Lugal is, right? Never heard of it. All right. Somebody in the comments who knows what Lugal is. No. Please. Hmm. Do you know that uh, Frito-Lay's uh, Tesla Semi spotted I'm on the road? Sounding like So disappointed future. in you not knowing what Lugal is. Huh? This, you just ruined the episode. Oh, I've done that before. Yeah. Is that, is that oh, surprise? my goodness. <laughs> Open to the road says I had drinks at Tortilla Flats with Peter Rawlinson. That is a uh, small town, population seven, that is on a uh, at the beginning of a dirt road that leads leads out to a lake, and it's probably one of the scariest roads you can ever drive blindfolded, or without a blindfold. Uh, it takes it takes three hours to drive twenty two miles. Wow. But anyway. Your Tesla Semi all painted up. Tell me about it. Well, uh, yeah. So uh, there's a bunch of these already out. 30, 40 of them have already been handed over and are being put in use. And I'll tell you, there was a, a big frustration I had. Baron and I talked about this off, off channel before we started. There was an article that said uh, that these are being put in use already on the 400-mile chip route. And the 100-mile beverage route, to which people in the comments said, oh, so even with chips, it only goes 400 miles. No, read the article. It actually says you get there at the end of the day, you still have 20% of your range left. And they go, oh, and once you put weight on it, you can only go 100 miles. No, that's not. <sighs> so the routes are already 100 miles. That's how they are. They're, that's. They're currently using diesel trucks. Do you think diesel trucks only have a range of 100 miles? Or do you honestly think that moving from chips to Pepsi reduces the range by 80%? <clears throat> you know, I love it. I get so much uh, grief for being too, easy, too soft on Tesla and too hard on Tesla. So I'm doing... I'm not doing something wrong. I think I'm doing both things wrong. I don't know what I'm doing. But the good news is, yeah, these are out. They're on the road. 
they're they're in the customer's hands. They have been sold. These are not leased. These are not loaners. These are sold vehicles that that Pepsi owns. I still have my same questions that I had before. How much do they cost? Or, I still have, or how there, much there, will they cost? There's a second question that they also haven't answered. Wait. Okay, I'll wait. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, those are the oh, two questions God. that they have not answered and will not answer. And I think it's the same reason Nicola doesn't want to answer those questions. Kenworth doesn't want to answer those questions. And it's because the price is changing. It is a moving target. And so is the weight. All these guys are still working to reduce the weight and reduce the cost. What he said. What I move said. It. Yeah, we're going to move it right along because we're running out of time. We've got three oh, minutes yeah, till we, are. we How about turn that? into pumpkins. Fudge me. Yeah, but Lucid uh, just uh, went ahead and got themselves a uh, $1.5 billion from the Saudi Public Wealth Fund and other investors. Uh, some of the shares were from the PIF, and some of them were uh, just uh, shares that they put out there to raise another $1.5 billion dollars which they said they planned to do back in September during their last quarter results. So this was not unexpected, except maybe it was unexpected that they had to do it while the stock price was near an all-time low, which sucks. They probably should have done it earlier. But, you know, who can read the, uh, the future? Even at today's astronomically terrible burn rate, this buys them six quarters of cash reserves. That's uh, that might be overestimating it. Really? Um, oh, that's what I had read. And uh, and but every vehicle you sell increases that amount of time. That's right. So uh, as of September 30th, they had 3.85 billion in cash. So if 1.5 billion was going to give them six quarters, that would say that that 3.85 meant that they had like three or four years worth already. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, um, but I, yeah. <laughs> Turns out USPS will start to electrify its fleet after all. I hope so. In, that windshield. It looks like it looks like a dog. <laughs> um, it Just, looks like a uh, pebble collector. Yeah, pebble collector. I don't know what that really means. Jeff says, ugly vehicles. Yeah, oh, but the I don't windshield. care. A rock, yeah, rocks. Yeah, oh, yeah. God. I don't care what it looks like all... I mean, when was the last good-looking mail truck? And you can tell that they're mail trucks because when you flip them over... Anyway, so the idea here is that they're going to do more of the electric and fewer of the internal combustion. <laughs> uh, yeah, and rumor has it that the general postmaster, DeJoy, owns a glass company that will be replacing the windshield as they break. I would believe that. I would believe I... that in a second. Yeah. <sighs> so the last one I really <laughs> wanted to cover. Oh, I'm going to mute that. I saw this great video. It compares the Lucid Air Sapphire, the Bugatti Chiron, and the Tesla Plaid in drag racing. And... Normally, a video like this, we wouldn't even bother covering, but the the editing in this is masterful. It's so cool. They, they've got all kinds of really neat effects where, like, yeah. he's doing slow motion effects. It's, it's just a really good production, and it's interesting. It, it really is. They do some pretty decent comparisons against the cars, um, and I encourage everyone to take a look at this video on Haggerty's uh, website. Hopefully they don't, uh, they don't copyright us for replaying any of this. Um, but we are encouraging people to go look at, at their video. So um, not only was it good, it was very insightful. Yeah. I thought it was. And it makes, it makes me think, will, if, if the Sapphire actually gets produced and people buy it, I'm not convinced that that will happen. Uh, in large enough numbers to make it worthwhile. But will uh, Tesla come out with the Plaid Plus? Will they uh, bring it back? So my guess is no, that they're, if this is a Tesla killer, 
a Tesla beater. It's not a killer. If it's if it's the quickest electric car, that the next quick electric car would be um, the Roadster. Because the Roadster would likely outperform this uh, on weight alone. Uh, and honestly, what this is, to me, is just an uncorked... Um, it's just an uncorked Lucid. It's just got higher uh, uh, warranty reserves. And that's it. Uh, uh, or an extra motor? Don't they already have a tri-motor version? Isn't the isn't the carbon one already tri-motor? This is tri over the last one they tested, the Pure or the Air or whichever. But uh, uh, I thought they already all, had a tri-motor all, version. All the other ones were, I believe, dual motors. Oh, okay. And, so this has yeah, got the the super high speed, extra sexy, two in the trunk, one in the front action going on. Yes, it's one of those. That's what they call it. I have just decided. Yeah. And you know, on the side of that car, it says "designed in California, manufactured in Arizona." Huh. Um, made Tesla's in Arizona. say "made on Earth by humans," so I don't know who to believe. No, I, I think it's cool that this was made here in Arizona. Yes. And I think it's interesting that for the first time in a long time, American engineering and manufacturing are crushing it. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think I, this will absolutely come out because there's a good margin in it and they need that. Oh, I believe it will come out. I'm just wondering... How if many the, buyers are out there for a quarter of a million dollars? Yeah. It's, it's a, just a lot of money. It is a little pricey. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know where the Plaid Plus was going to come out. I don't think that was ever announced. Um, obviously, it was going to be north of 140. But how far north? And we never really had real specs on that, did we? No. I think a lot of the ambitions of the refresh Model S were scaled back um, in part because the 4680 batteries were not quite ready and other shortcomings, but mm -hmm. who knows? Who knows? I, not I. <sighs> All right. Well, I'm thanking my patrons. I'll thank your patrons, too. Yeah, I want to th I want to thank Brian's Patreons for being here, for supporting him and his channel. He needs all the support, emotional, physical, mental, all of it. He needs it. I need so it. So thank you for being there for him. And what do you want to say to my Patreons? I want to say, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? All this you guy does is create original content that you literally can't get anywhere else. And you reward him for it? You're only encouraging him to make more. Have you How thought this through you? at all? Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. That's a that's a weird thank you, but I like that. I, I just because it's weird doesn't mean I don't like it. So yeah. anyway, you guys should really watch this video because I'm going to keep watching it even after I hang up with you guys. Because uh, and Brian can just keep talking about whatever his dog and <laughs> spade. I'm As gonna I watch do. The <laughs> yeah, and I'm just going to watch it. The lucid kicking butt. So I do want to thank my patrons. They are great. As I've said before, they are better than Brian's unless they are the same. You're all great. We're going to be, I'm going to be back. What? And then they're twice as good. Yes. Yes. Squared actually. Um, I'll be having a Nikola live stream tomorrow where we will be flying over the Nikola site and talking about what we see. So come join us for that. Be tomorrow afternoon in the sometime. PM. So, Brian, what do you got going on? Well, I, uh, who knows, man. I'm just kind of, I've got some interviews and stuff coming up. But uh, I wanted to thank Charlie for uh, the super chat with the with with the with the sentiment. Enjoy most of a Christmas beer. <laughs> I'll drink the whole thing, but I'll only enjoy most of it. I promise. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>